tuned into Quick Charge, the high voltage podcast bringing you the top stories in electric vehicles and sustainable energy daily. And it's all powered by electric. Welcome to Quick Charge. It's September 26, 2024, and I'm your host, Joe Boris. We're going to start today off with news from Tesla. Now, a couple of days ago, we talked about Fred Lambert's personal experience with hardware 12.5 for full self-driving, but now we have some independent testing. And in these independent tests, Tesla's full self-driving showed a ridiculous 13 miles between interventions, a far, far cry from this one intervention per year that was touted in other social media posts. AMCI drove more than 1,000 miles on FSD 12.5.1 and 12.5.3 in a 2024 Model 3 performance with hardware 4 in different driving environments. The results are even worse than most of the FSD critics thought. AMCI is reporting more than 75 interventions or one intervention every 13 miles on average. From the report, While impressive for a uniquely camera-based system, AMCI testing's evaluation of Tesla full self-driving exposed how often human intervention was required for safe operation. In fact, our drivers had to intervene over 75 times during the evaluation, an average of once every 13 miles. After its testing, AMCI admitted that Tesla's FSD system was impressive, but warned that the awe you get from first trying it can lead to complacency, which can be dangerous. Guy Mangiamili, director of AMCI testing, explains, quote, what's most disconcerting and unpredictable is that you may watch FSD successfully negotiate a specific scenario many times, often the same stretch of road or intersection, only to have it inexplicably fail the next time. Whether it's a lack of computing power, an issue with buffering as the car gets, quote, behind on calculations or some small detail of surrounding assessment, it's impossible to know. These failures are the most insidious, but there are also continuous failures of simple programming inadequacy, such as only starting lane changes towards a freeway exit a scant tenth of a mile before the exit itself that handicap the system and cast doubt on the overall quality of its base programming. AMCI says that it plans to release another set of videos from its first thousand miles on full self-driving next week and plans to test future updates. So Fred had a bad experience. AMCI had a bad experience. Talk to us about your experiences in the comments below. We've been accused of becoming a Tesla hate channel. I don't think that's necessarily fair, but when the CEO of your company comes out and says you'll only have one intervention a year, and that turns out to be every 15 minutes, I think that's worth calling out, which is why we did it. But Hyundai's new Georgia EV plant has added its 18th supplier as an extensive U.S. network begins to unfold. Hyundai, of course, has a $7.6 billion EV plant in Georgia, and it's gained its 18th official supplier as the automaker builds out its supply chain. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp announced that Shinsung Petrochemical will invest $11.2 million in a new manufacturing facility in Toombs County. Shinsung, a leading auto sealant company, will be a key supplier for Hyundai's new Meta plant in Bryan County. We are excited that Shinsung is joining the growing network of suppliers locating in rural communities, Kemp said. The new facility, scheduled to open in 2025, will be the first in Toombs County, creating more than 30 new jobs. The company is the 18th supplier to invest in the area surrounding Hyundai's new Georgia EV plant, with Hyundai investing $7.6 billion of its own to develop the facility and directly creating more than 8,500 new jobs in the state. Another $5 billion EV battery plant with SK on is being built in Bartow County, Georgia, creating an additional 3,500 jobs. Now, You might think that that's big enough news right there. You're talking about 11,000, more than 11,000 new jobs, but Hyundai's not done yet. Hyundai and Kia are launching a new LFP battery project to lower the price of EVs. Hyundai and Kia launched the new project to develop lithium iron phosphate battery cathode material for their future EV models. As part of the initiative, the automakers are teaming up with Hyundai Steel and EcoPro BM, South Korea's leading battery material maker, to develop a precursor for LFP battery cathode material production. Korea's Ministry of Trade, Industry, and Energy will also support the four-year project as part of its LFP battery technology development plan. Quote, to meet future demand in the EV market, rapid technological development and effective battery supply chain establishment are essential, Hyundai and Kia's electrification and driving materials boss, Soon Jung Jung, said. 
The new project is designed to, quote, reduce import reliance while securing Hyundai a stable supply chain as the industry shifts to electric. Hyundai and Kia have already launched some of their more affordable EVs this year, including Kia's EV3 and the Hyundai Casper Electric, also known as the Insta EV. The Casper Electric starts at the equivalent of just $22,800 in Korea. With incentives, Hyundai says the Casper EV can be bought for as little as $14,500, while Kia's EV3 costs about $30,000. In Europe, Hyundai's Casper EV will start at less than $27,000 with up to 220 miles of range. Kia's EV3, meanwhile, starts at around 42,000 with up to 372 miles of WLTP range. Now, as if that wasn't enough to get excited about from Hyundai and Kia, Kia's EV charging service now has access to more than 800,000 chargers across Europe. Kia is continuing to make it easier for EV drivers to own and operate their vehicles by giving them more places to charge. Its EV charging service, Kia Charge, now has over 800,000 participating charger points across 28 European countries, an increase of more than 39% from last year. The Kia Charge service is a complete service for Kia drivers that includes route planning, authentication, and payments under one umbrella. Quote, Kia continues to set the benchmark for making electric driving more accessible to a wider range of audience, with Kia Charge helping to simplify and enhance every journey. That's according to Kia's European Director of Customer Experience and Solutions, Martin Entoffer. The charging solution now has over 100,000 subscribers, and Kia says its drivers have already completed more than 2.5 million sessions using the Kia Charge card or app. Now, we like to end these shows every day talking about sustainability, talking about the grid, talking about renewable energy. Today is no different. The new California smart grid law is going to help fix solar and the grid by simply replacing wires. California Governor Gavin Newsom signed a new law into effect directing the state to upgrade its electrical transmission system through the use of new smart grid technologies and replacing old wires with newer high-tech materials in order to get the state ready for increased renewable energy generation and transmission. California's new law, SB 1006, directs the state to use, quote, grid-enhancing technologies and, quote, reconductoring to solve growing pains with the existing grid. GET, of course, is a catch-all term for smart grid solutions that make the grid more capable of managing loads efficiently. These include advanced power flow control systems, which can channel power where it's needed, dynamic line rating systems, which can monitor local weather conditions to make the grid more responsive, and topology optimization software, which helps to reroute traffic on a grid much the same way your phone's traffic app might do for cars. Combined, these technologies can reduce grid congestion by 40% or more and reduce the need for curtailment, which is when renewable resources are available but not transferred to the grid due to congestion. This can be built quickly and at low cost without needing to wait for more transmission lines. In addition to this smart technology, another simple solution goes by the name reconductoring, which simply means replacing old heavy wires with new lighter ones. Reconductored cables use structural materials like carbon fiber, which is much stronger and lighter than steel, as well as advanced materials that have less electrical resistance than aluminum. And while we're at it, we can build sensors into these new lines to enable dynamic line rating systems mentioned above. And while carbon fiber is expensive, it's a lot cheaper than building an entire new transmission line. Adding new capacity through reconductoring is thought to cost less than half as much as adding it through building new transmission lines. California recently got a $600 million grant from the federal government for these purposes. And again, it happens faster too. All of this should not only increase California's grid capabilities and make it more ready for the future, it should also lower electricity prices by reducing congestion and enabling more use of cheaper, cleaner alternatives like solar and wind. These upgrades will offer downward pressure on rates. So that may seem like the end of today's episode, but wait, there's more. Get all your EV questions answered during Drive Electric Week, September 27th to October 6th. That's beginning tomorrow. This is absolutely critical. As you know, we've talked so much about the misconceptions surrounding EVs, some of the different ways that people who are, generally speaking, car people who are internal combustion gearhead people score two out of 10 on surveys and quizzes about how EVs work. At the end of the day, 
most people don't know, and that's okay. New technology is new, and there's a whole new learning curve, and we're still on the steepest part of it. Even people who are supposed experts or enthusiasts might have a lot to learn by attending some of their local events surrounding Drive Electric Week. Where I'm at in Chicago, we have Chicago Drives Electric happening in Oak Brook, Illinois. There's going to be several other events out there as well. Check out Jamie Dow's fantastic article. There's a bunch of those listed, and we'll keep updating that throughout Drive Electric Week. That's all I've got for September 26th. Be sure to like and subscribe if you like what you heard. If you didn't like it, I can subscribe anyway, man. I like arguing with people in the comments.